Today we are going to be taking a look at Request Network. Now Request are essentially involved in the invoicing sector. They allow you to get paid and pay in terms of cryptocurrencies and they're decentralized, meaning there's no intermediary between you know, the transactions. So if we take a look at their information, we can see that the Request Utility Token launched in 2017. And I think one key thing to look at in terms of launching in 2017 is that they survived, we can take a look at the chart, the massive bull run that came in 2018, the start of 2018, and they survived that sort of massive pump and massive dump essentially because so many coins after the bull run they just died out and seeing the request survived that is quite a healthy thing I believe. I'm no financial advisor so please do not make any decisions based on what I say but getting back to what they are and what they do so they're based on the Ethereum network they're a decentralized payment system where anyone as I was saying can request and receive money and by removing the third party it makes the whole thing a lot cheaper so I don't know if you've ever used something let's say like Stripe where Stripe you can add it to your website and you get paid um, and Stripe take about 20p commission regardless of what you're selling I know this firsthand from when I've been selling you know small phone wallets and stuff like that and when you're only selling something worth like 50p it really is a big chunk so they kind of operate in a similar environment to that except they would remove themselves as the intermediary and allow people since it's decentralized to save on that sort of transaction fee that you'd normally pay to an intermediary. Now, again, I'm always a big, um, I'm very fond of cryptocurrencies that are involved in the sort of finance ecosystem and um, ones that kind of remove the need for an intermediary. And the thing about requests that makes it unique is that the, the payments when they're requested and received, that everything's done in, you can see here, one click, peer-to-peer -peer manner in one click. And the fact that the, the payments are supposedly push generated instead of pool generated allows this sort of transaction process to be a lot faster, smoother and more efficient. And obviously there's a lot more privacy in terms of information because data currently is a big thing about data being you know, leaked and given out to people and advertisers and companies. So the fact that users don't have to share their account information is again a, a, a nice plus advantage to it. Taking a look at the request website, we can see that they're kind of, their, their products are up and running. I believe they're integrated into quite a few um, other cryptocurrencies and partners with like Ava, as you can see here. So really allowing the payment process to, to work efficiently is where, re, uh, is where request gets its value from. The DeFi space currently is popping off. We're going through a massive bull run. And obviously everything you look at should be taken uh, with a pinch of salt because anybody can say anything's a good crypto right now. And because of the bull run, it's, it's gone up and everybody looks like a genius, but you really have to do your research into it. Now, I love the way you can integrate request into your sort of platform or whatever you're trying to do in terms of selling your services. Uh, they've got a very easy, supposedly, integration tool and I think the more they can make their sort of integration with request mainstream to other people the higher usage request is going to get and ultimately the higher the request token demand uh, because that's what you need to power the sort of platform and to use the platform obviously it's going to be much much better for requests because that's going to send the price skyrocketing towards the moon obviously if nobody uses request and there's actually a better alternative to request then nobody's going to want to use request and the price is going to go downhill now i do like what request is doing and i think as i always say being involved in the finance space for crypto is a very very positive thing however my only concern with request is that let's say a bigger crypto let's say something like cap i don't know a if they decide you know what uh, i don't want to use request anymore i don't want to partner up with them i want to do what request is doing but i want to make my own version of it because they're such a bigger crypto i worry that that could kind of just wipe out all of request business in a sense. But taking a look at their Twitter, we can see that in the recent months, uh, invoicing and app activity has gone up massively. They're, they've gone up almost 70% in March relative to February alone. So they posted that literally an hour ago. And obviously the, the token burn and the tokenomics behind it is obviously very good because the more, I guess, transactions are processed, the more tokens are burnt, the more tokens are burnt, the lower supply, the lower supply the higher the price increase max that lower supply with the higher demand you're laughing there's only 38,000 wallets currently in request which isn't ideal and you can see that yesterday there were 67 transactions which i mean if you look at the increase in transactions over the last 90 days a plus 61 percent growth is very very healthy but 67 transactions per day for a company valued at 200 million it's not crazy numbers but then again the trading volume is very high at 200 million and the number of request wallets is obviously uh, growing very fast at the moment which means that 
the more the rate of growth, the higher the price is going to be because that rate of growth is also factored into the request price as well as the amount of users and current activity. So the growth looks healthy, but the overall numbers, are they enough to justify the current price of request? It's very tough to say. So here we can see that the market cap is 170 million and the fully diluted market cap is also the same because the circulating supply is pretty much at 100%, um, which is one of the first times I've seen a circulating supply at 100%. So we can see the request is liquid. There's 200 million of trading volume. And taking a look at the request chart here, I've drawn in a line from the start of 2021 to now. And we can see that it's gone from roughly, let's get another info line in here just to highlight the price at the start of 2021. We can see it was 0 0.028. And we can see that now, re, uh, um, now request currently sits at 0 0.173. So we can see that it's kind of gone up about sixfold since the start of the year, which is no small increase. By all means, that is a massive increase. So we can take a look at the uh, the actual chart here. We can see it's a 40 degree angle line increase for six months, which is rare. <laughs> yes, it's very steep. I mean, obviously, seeing a sort of increase like this in the last three, four months in terms of um, cryptos is crazy. But obviously, this angle is relative to the scale. And we can see that often there is a few pullbacks. So we can see that the 23rd of March, when obviously the market bled slightly, it pulled back from about 0 0.1 all the way back down to 0 0.08. Then the market pumped again, and we can see it pumped up to almost 0.19 point, you know, one nine sort of situation before the market bled again, and it bled all the way down to 0 0.12. And then again, we might be entering this sort of similar pump again, where it's pumped back up. We're currently sitting at 0 0.17, and who knows in the future whether it's going to go up or down. So if we take a look at the one day chart, we can see that it really does bug out. My trading view sometimes bugs out. We can see that they're touching 0.173, which is there, which is pushing back up onto, onto their, you know, their, their two, three month, three year for that matter high. In terms of my thoughts on requests, now, obviously, I'm no financial advisor. Please do not make any decisions based on what I say. But while I think the request and the payment solution around Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and all this other thing is such a, a wide, hot topic, there's so many... Um, things being at so many companies and cryptos trying to be at the forefront of the crypto ecosystem in terms of the payments and buying stuff and selling stuff and converting that transaction between real fiat money and and then again cryptocurrencies and there's su it's such a competitive space and I already mentioned earlier on what happens if a bigger crypto decides I want to have a smaller subsection where I try and take on and do what request is doing that's obviously going to damage um, request chances and market share and so on but I think one of my other concerns is that the whole invoicing sector um, scope, is it quite limited? Like how much market share uh, is out there and how much of it can request capture? But you look at requests and you think, great, the more the crypto space grows, the more requests will grow. But how much can it diversify into other sectors to bring in additional value to whoever the investors are? And I think that it's a very narrow field and there's such a competitive narrow field and focusing on solely the invoicing sector. I think, you know, I think it's good. I think the coin has got a lot of potential. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I think it has. But I just worry if it makes any sense at all about the scope of it. Now, if, you know, anyone else disagrees, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. I'm always interested in what people think. I never claim to be an expert. I never claim to be an all knowledgeable man on crypto. I just like sharing my opinions. People like listening to just me waffle about crypto and what I think is interesting and what I like and what I'm keeping an eye on. So I'll definitely be keeping an eye on the uh, an eye on request. They're about mid rank in terms of top 300 almost for crypto uh, market caps. And yeah, let me know what you guys think on this and I'll catch you again soon.